Hey there, it's Dana from MadeEveryday.com. And let me ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to make a quilt before, but you feel completely overwhelmed with the amount of information, with the terms, the rules, the rulers? I totally feel you. I've been there before. It can feel a little overwhelming. So today, you and I are gonna break it all down together. We're gonna to make a quilt from the very beginning, through all the details to the very end in one big video. And then you can pause it where you need to. So, let's do it. Making a quilt is something I find really relaxing and also really fun. And the process is different for each person. But what I love is that it's something I can work on bits at a time. I can start my project, I can be interrupted by people, I can put it aside for two weeks and come back to it. It's just like this great side project that's always there waiting for me. Now we talked about how it can feel a little overwhelming at first, so we're gonna keep it simple. We are going to make a striped quilt, or as I like to call it, a stripey quilt. I just really love stripes. This is a free pattern you can find on my website. Go to madeeveryday.com. You can download it, you can read through it, but we're gonna walk through all the steps together in this video. And we are going to make a baby size quilt, which is really manageable, and we're gonna use some of my own fabrics. You need a cutting mat, a ruler, and a rotary cutter. And this is kind of a good general size. It's 18 by 24 inches. You can get them smaller, larger. For my ruler, mine is three inches wide. They come five inches wide. They come in triangles, octagons, so many different sizes. But this is kind of a good general size and you can see it fits the length of my cutting mat. For my rotary cutter, this is 45 millimeter rotary cutter and how it works is you pull this down. You can see the sharp blade and when you're done, you can close it up for safety purposes. And then you'll put your fabric under here and you press down hard, cut along the edge away from you and it gives you really nice, precise cuts. Grab your quilt pattern. This is the stripey quilt and pillow sham. It's so fun to make the pillow sham. And you don't need to print the whole thing. Just print this cutting chart that's on page four and it tells us exactly what we need to cut for each part of the quilt. We have colorful stripes, which are each gonna be a different fabric or you can make yours the same. And then we have the background stripes. And in quilting patterns, the background fabric just refers to the fabric that you see continued throughout, whether it's white, black, patterned, but just something that is kind of a repeating fabric. So. If we look here, we are gonna make a baby size, but you could make all the way up to a king size, and it says that we need to cut six. We're gonna do six different fabrics, and for the background stripes, we need to cut seven. And then it tells us that we need to cut it four and a quarter inches by width of fabric, W-O-F. That just means the entire width of the fabric from selvage to selvage when it's on the bolt, and that's a common term that you see in patterns. So, let's cut our fabrics. Should you pre-wash your fabrics before you make a quilt? Well, that is personal preference. But I will say that most quilters probably do not pre-wash their fabrics or their batting for a couple reasons. First, it's so much easier to cut through fabric that's fresh off the bolt with less wrinkles. And then you also wanna think about your quilt in its final stage, when it's all done and when you wash it for the first time. You want all those layers, the fabric, the batting, and the thread to all shrink up together at the same rate. And when you do that, you get this really fun, crinkly look. I have my fabric here and you can see it's folded in half so that it is the width of the fabric. And if you were making a larger size quilt, you're going to cut strips, sew them together, and then you'll have one long continuous strip. But for the baby size, we just need to do width of the fabric. So I'm gonna fold mine in half again so that it's four layers there. And you always wanna start with a clean edge. Mine is pretty clean, but just to make sure that it's super straight. So I'm gonna line it up there with one of my markings and line up my ruler and press hard over here so that nothing slips underneath and cut off that edge right there, whoops. There we go, I didn't press hard enough. Okay, so then I wanna do four and a quarter inches. So you can pull this over to the front of your cutting mat or you can just go here and count four and a quarter inches. So I am gonna cut, go one, two, three, four and a quarter and line up my ruler right there. You know, I always, count with my finger like that almost every time because guarantee I do the math wrong if I don't. So there we go, we have our first strip. Now I'm gonna cut the rest of my strips. I have some cute fabrics right here from my Butterscotch and Squeeze collection. And then for the background fabric, I think I'm gonna do these hot dogs. So I am going to cut my fabric. I 
have all of my stripes cut. I have my colorful stripes and my background stripes. And then you can see, according to the pattern, we're just going to alternate sewing these together. So we're actually going to start with a background stripe as the first thing. And then comes our first color, colorful stripe. So we're gonna sew these with right sides together. So just like this, and I'm not going to pin. If you feel like you need to pin, then go for it. But I feel comfortable just going like this. And we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. A quarter inch is a very common, probably what most quilting requires is a quarter inch. Okay, let's go to our sewing machine. On my baby lock, I'm using a quarter inch foot, which means that the edge of my presser foot is a quarter inch from the needle here. That gives me a quarter inch seam allowance. If your machine doesn't come with one, no big deal. You can use your standard presser foot, which you typically see me use. And what you would wanna do is just make sure that your needle position is over enough that the edge of your presser foot is a quarter inch. And if you're not sure if it is a quarter inch, just put your needle down, use a little ruler, and you can measure and see that that's exactly a quarter of an inch. Okay, I have my fabric here. Again, I have right sides together. There we go, my first two stripes. And we are just going to sew right down. I love this project because you just sew really long straight lines. And if that's something that you struggle with, then this is a great project. Okay, keep pausing just to make sure that your fabric is aligned exactly together underneath. You don't wanna get off on that. Quilting is all about being very precise and the more precise you are with your cutting and your sewing and every step of the way, the more, well, the better your quilt is going to turn out. But don't stress over it. There's always ways to kind of fudge it and make it work, but just, you know, do your best. Okay, we're getting to the end here. Then you could press this right now or you can press it at the end. It's just kind of personal preference. I actually prefer to press in between, but for purposes of this moment, I'm just going to go ahead and sew my next one. So I'm gonna take my next stripe, which is the background stripe. And again, right sides together. And here we go, background stripe number two. So all the way down. And then we're just going to keep alternating whatever order you have placed your colorful stripes in with your background stripes. done sewing all the stripes and now we get to press the quilt and like I said you could press it in between each stripe or at the end I'm using a wool pressing mat which works really great I feel like it gives a nice clean crisp press and then there are two schools of thought with two schools of thought with pressing you can press your seams open which means you know pulling them both open and pressing like that with your iron like that all the way down, or you could press them to the side. And typically if you press to the side, you wanna to press to the darker side of the fabric so that if you were to press to the lighter side, you might see that seam underneath this light fabric. So I am going to press mine to the side. And you wanna make sure, you don't wanna like tug the fabric, but make sure that nothing is folded underneath there. So I'm gonna go like this. And if you like to use steam, you could use steam. You could use a little bit of water. I'm just pressing mine just like that. And on this side, I'm gonna press this one to the other side. So when you look at the back of this quilt, it's gonna look like some of your stripes are a little skinnier than the other, but it's just because of the way that you have pressed your seams. So, okay, I'm gonna press this whole quilt. And you know, that's just, Part of the process of quilting is the pressing. And some people really love this step. They find it really soothing and relaxing. But if you don't love this step, just, you know, power through. It'll make your quilt look really awesome. Okay. 
I'm pressing the last part right here. And then I'm gonna flip it over and press the other side, just so that everything, oh, look how pretty that looks. I mean, it's like a quilt already. Okay, and then we get to talk about our backing fabric, our binding fabric, and making the quilt sandwich. Quick anatomy of a quilt lesson. First you have the quilt top, which is what we have pieced together by sewing all these stripes together. Then in the middle you have a layer of batting and that just gives extra warmth to your quilt and adds a little bit more weight. Then you have the backing fabric or the back of your quilt. And this can be made from one giant piece of fabric or by piecing together multiple fabrics. And then around the edge you have this really cute binding and that just encloses all those raw edges and adds a really fun pop of color. So now we're going to pick out the backing and the binding. And it's one of my favorite steps. Let's talk about batting. This goes in the middle of your quilt and you have a few options. Most quilters probably use a low profile, natural cotton batting such as this. You can buy it by the yard, from the roll, or in pre-cut packages at most fabric shops. I typically buy a lot of yards at once, so I ask if I can keep the roll for easy storage. It comes in cream color and in white. Another option is to use a synthetic batting, which comes in different thicknesses or loft. And when you use a high loft batting and you do all those quilting stitches on top, it gives your quilt a really fun, puffy look. So try out some different options. Every quilt is different and see what you like. Before I begin a quilt, I usually have a general idea of what fabric I wanna use for the back, but it's not until I see the finished quilt top that I really feel like I can make that call. So I like to pull a few fabrics out and hold it next to the quilt top. One idea is that, this is from my Butterscotch collection, you could use a fabric that's already in the quilt for your backing. And you have to remember that this is going to be on the back, so I hold it like this, and then you can flip it over and see how does it look when I turn the quilt over. So that is a really fun idea. But I'm also really loving these oranges from Squeeze. I just think that is a big, fun, bold print, and I like how it ties into the orange colors and the blacks, and I think pink and orange is adorable together. But then I also really love this black, but I think that this pink would be adorable as a binding with the oranges. So to check out the binding, I like to hold the quilt just right at the edge so that I can see how does it look to have that tiny little pop of color right there. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. One more thing we wanna think about in this step is what kind of quilting do we want to do on top? And you're probably thinking, well, we did just quilt, but what we've done is we've pieced together our quilt top. Quilting is actually when you sew all these fun decorative designs on top of your quilt to hold the layers together. And this can be done with thread, it can be done with yarn, it can be done with hand stitching, embroidery floss, there's tons of different options. So you wanna think about, do I want a thread color like I've done here, this white that just kind of blends in with the white as in these stripes? Or do I want a fun pop of color thread and more of a statement piece and an interesting design? So I like to pull a few thread colors out and see how they look on my quilt. And I have a few right here. I think this purple is a little too purple. So I am a big fan of pink. I'm gonna go with pink. And then I hold it down and I see, okay, if I did some stripes and I maybe I'll pull through a few strands out here, how does that look? And then I can turn it the other way. What if I did like a perpendicular grid here? I can see on the brown how that pink shows up really nice. But what if I did diagonal stripes, which is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Maybe two inch wide stripes and maybe I turn it into a grid like that other quilt I just showed you. So I think that that is what I'm going to do. So we're gonna square up our quilt by trimming off the edges and then we're ready to put together our quilt sandwich. Trim off the sides of your quilt so you trim off all those selvage edges and so we have nice, long, straight, clean lines. This is called squaring up the quilt. And I think it's helpful to do on the floor so I can use the grout lines of my tile or a wooden floor to really help keep me in a long straight line as I cut. We should only have to trim the sides on this particular quilt since the top and bottom of our quilt is one big long stripe. But if you were making a more intricate quilt design that had a bunch of piecing at the top and bottom, you would wanna square up all four sides of your quilt. Then make sure your quilt top is nice and pressed and that there are no lingering threads on the back that might get sandwiched into your final finished quilt. 
To make the quilt sandwich, start by laying your backing fabric on the floor with the fabric facing down. Smooth everything out and tape it securely with painter's tape. You want the backing and the batting to be about eight inches larger than the quilt top. This is so you have a little bit of wiggle room as you do those quilting stitches on top so that hopefully nothing shifts. If you're making a size larger than a baby quilt, you will probably need to piece together some larger pieces of fabric to get a wide enough backing for your quilt. This can be done with the same fabrics or you could use multiple fabrics or you could get creative and use a bed sheet. There are lots of options. But with the baby quilt, we're going to fudge that size a little bit and cut our fabric 44 inches wide by 52 inches since we only wanna use the width of the fabric or one big piece of fabric for our baby quilt. Now that we have our backing secured on the ground, we can lay our batting on top of that. And if you haven't cut it already, you can just trim it down to the same size as the backing. Secure the batting as well with painter's tape all the way around. And finally, we're ready to place our quilt top on top of the batting. This step is called basting and it's meant to hold all those layers together as we do those fancy quilt stitches so that nothing shifts as we're going. There are multiple ways you can do this. You can use safety pins, you can do long hand stitches, you could use spray base. It will just take some time for you to figure out which method you prefer. I'm gonna show you the safety pin method. But first, let's think one more time about those decorative stitches we wanna do on top. Now, if you wanna do something simple that you can kind of eyeball, maybe some straight lines that you use your presser foot or the edge of your quilt stripes to help guide you, you may not need to draw anything on top. But I think I wanna do that diagonal grid I was showing you. So I'm gonna take my quilting ruler and my fabric marker and draw two inch wide lines, shifting my ruler down as I go since I don't have a ginormous ruler. And I'm gonna draw in one direction and then shift and go diagonally the other direction. When you're using a fabric marker, you always wanna test first and make sure that it will not leave a line behind. Most fabric markers will erase with time or heat or water, so always do a test first. And then we're ready to put our safety pins on. I'm done marking my lines in both directions for the quilting in the next step. And now we are ready to attach our safety pins, which I love to keep in this cute little holder bin. I'm using these safety pins that are bent, which makes it really easy to get through all the layers of our quilt sandwich. And because we secured everything really nicely down here with our tape, it's holding all of our layers in place during this step, which is very helpful. You wanna place your pins about a fist width or hand width apart. And mostly you just wanna be liberal with your pinning. The more you use, the more it is going to hold all of your layers in place as we quilt in the next step. And since I know exactly where I'm going to quilt my lines, I'm going to avoid placing a pin on any of those quilt markings. That way I don't have to remove the safety pins as I'm sewing. Sometimes you do and that's totally fine, but this will just make the process a little bit easier. Okay, I am going to keep basting or pinning this entire quilt and then we are ready to go back to our sewing machine and do our quilting lines. I'm all done pinning the quilt sandwich. You can see we have the backing here, we've got the batting in the middle, and we've got our quilt top, and all these safety pins holding all the layers together as we get ready to do our quilt lines. And another option for you with quilting is that you could send your quilt out to what's called a long arm quilter. And that's just an experienced quilter who has a long arm quilting machine. They put your quilt on rollers, and they can do really intricate quilting designs on top for you. That's something that you pay for, and that's a cool option also but I wanna show you that you can do the quilting right at home on your home sewing machine. I'm gonna do mine on my Baby Lock Brilliant. I have pink thread in the top of my machine and I'm using pink in the bobbin as well. And you wanna think about that. Do you wanna use the same color on the top and bottom or different colors? And then I am gonna come over here and use my automatic threader. I love that on my Baby Lock. The last thing I'm gonna do is increase my stitch length to a four so I get a really nice long stitch. I'm going to start in the middle of my quilt and do my stitch lines working my way out. If you started on the ends and worked your way to the middle, you might end up with some bunching here. So because I marked those lines, I can just start sewing right on top and I'm trying to do my best to stay right on top of that line. And you'll notice I did not do a forward and back stitch. That's kind of, with quilting, a little bit personal preference. And as I'm going, 
since I am not using a walking foot, which is something we'll have to talk about in another video, I'm just using my standard presser foot. I changed back from my quarter inch foot and I'm using both my hands to really help. I'm not pushing. Well, I guess I'm pushing a little bit, helping the fabric get through so that all these layers, nothing's getting stuck underneath and it's just going through evenly through my sewing machine. You'll also notice that I have this side of my quilt rolled up and that really helps if, whoops, I gotta take one out. That really helps if you're use, doing a larger quilt, especially. This baby size is a little more manageable under my machine. But when I've done a twin size one, I keep it rolled on both sides so that I can kind of hold it and so I don't have as much bunched up fabric under my machine. I said I wasn't gonna have to remove as much. I guess I didn't do a very good job. I got close to the, close to the lines there. Okay, so when I get to the end, I am gonna come back and go right up to the top again. You want to go the same direction each time, at least that's what I have been taught, so that you don't end up with uneven pulling of your fabric as well. But you know what? I've also done it where I've gone one way and then switched and gone the other way. So I guess try it out and do what you like. Okay, now we're going to the second line. And you can see there, I was kind of bunching up a little. I just want to kind of try to smooth that out with my hands as I go. And then I'm gonna work my way all the way out to this side, and we're gonna come back and work our way all the way this way. And we're gonna end up with a bunch of fabric here, but that is just part of the fun and something we will manage. And then we're gonna go and do the other direction as well. I'm done quilting my quilt. I took off all the safety pins. I pressed all those lines that I marked earlier so the lines would disappear, kind of like magic. And then I squared up the quilt again on the floor, trimming off all the excess batting and backing fabric from the edges. And I love how it's looking on the front and on the back. Okay, we just have one step left. We are gonna make a cute little binding to go all the way around the edge. The first time I made a quilt binding, I was a little bewildered because I didn't know what I was doing. I thought it was going to be just like making bias tape, which you know I love, and in many ways it is, but it's actually even a little bit easier. Bias tape is a trend that's used to bind around clothing and other projects, and it's made by cutting strips of fabric on the bias or the 45 degree angle of the grain line of the fabric. And what that does is it gives it a little bit of give or subtle stretch to it so it's easy to go around the curves of a neckline, of a shirt, or an armhole, something like that. I have a detailed video for it here on my channel. A quilt binding, however, is cut with strips that are going along the grain line which means it does not have as much give to it, which is perfectly fine since we're going to sew it to our quilt, which has really straight edges. And when we take our quilt right here, you can see what we're going to do is we are going to sew it right here, then it's going to fold over to the back and go around the back and it's gonna bind this little edge for us. So we're going to cut straight strips of fabric. Let me open this up so you can see. We're gonna sew them all together and then we're gonna press the whole thing in half. Now, how wide should you cut the strip? Well, there are two schools of thought. Some people cut them two and a quarter inches wide. Some cut two and a half inches wide. I personally like the two and a half inches. I just think it gives a little bit more wiggle room and you will figure that out as you're going, but it gives you more space after this is sewn to fold over and to fully enclose the stitch line that's going to be visible on your quilt. So I'm gonna cut all my strips Two and a half inches. Now, how many strips do I need to cut? Well, let's do a little math. Measure around your quilt. I know that mine is 42 inches on one side, plus 42 inches, and then it's 48 inches on the other two sides. That gives me 180 inches. And then we want to cut our strips the width of the fabric, which is, let's say 41 inches. So I'm gonna divide this number by 41. It's telling me I need 4.4 strips. Well, let's round that up to five. And if you were making one and it said 4.9, I would round that up to six. You wanna have a little bit of wiggle room because we are going to sew these strips together with bias seams. And now that I've totally confused you, don't worry. 
We'll walk through it together. Let's cut our strips of fabric. The nice thing about cutting a quilt binding on the grain line is that it doesn't require very much fabric. You can get a whole quilt binding by about a half yard of fabric. Okay, let's sew these together. Now, probably what your brain is going to tell you is that you want to take them with right sides together and sew them with a seam so that when it opens up, it's like that. And that is totally an option. And then you would press it in half and you have your really long quilt binding. But a better option is to sew it with a bias seam. Now, if I go back to my bias tape here and not to confuse you, but if we look at our seam right here, this was sewn with a bias seam, meaning that it was sewn on a diagonal like that. And what that does is that when we fold it all back up, the seam is distributed throughout this little area. Part of my seam is here and part is here. And that just makes it less bulky when it's going around our project. So a better option is to take one of your strips like this, lay the other strip perpendicular with it. And I didn't cut off my selvages. You don't have to do that either, or you could. And you wanna overlap them at least by a quarter inch hanging off the edge there. And then we're going to sew from this little corner to that corner, a diagonal by a seam. And when we're done and we open it up, you can see that it's going to make one long strip for us like that with this distributed seam right there. So let's go to our machine. I'm going to sew, sew all five of my strips together and then we're gonna press the whole thing in half. We have our first two pieces here and we're going to start right at this little notch here and sew down to this one. You could draw a line if you need to, but it's a pretty short distance. You can pretty much eyeball it. I did a little back stitch and then I'm gonna sew right down. And then you can see when I open this up, we have this nice clean bias seam. And when we're done sewing all of our strips, we're gonna trim off all this excess bulk right here. So we're gonna grab our next strip and place it again. And if you had a repeating design, say there was a giant orange right here and you wanted to make sure that these two match up well, well, you can shift these around. You could sew this all the way up here just so that you get your design to repeat. You just wanna make sure that it's overhanging at least a quarter of an inch and that you sew in between those two spots. So let's go back and do this one. Okay, I'm gonna finish sewing all my strips. We're gonna trim off the bulk and press it all in half. Our binding is all done and pressed and ready to attach to our quilt. But first we need to decide, do we want to machine bind our quilt or hand bind our quilt? Let me show you the difference. Traditional quilters probably prefer to hand bind their quilt just so that you get a hidden binding without any stitch marks all the way around. Then we start by sewing it to the front of the quilt first, then we flip the binding around to the back, and this part is done with a needle and thread, hand sewing it so that all those little stitches are hidden inside the binding. The other option is to machine bind your quilt. When you do that, you start by sewing it instead of to the front first, you start by sewing it to the back first. Then you flip it over to the front and you sew it in place with your machine. This method is definitely faster, but you do see those stitch marks on top. So you'll just have to decide for yourself, try out the hand binding first and see if you like that. Personally, I love this step. I love sitting with my quilt at the end outside or in front of a great movie or in the car and just slowly methodically stitching it all in place. I find it really relaxing. Some people, however, cannot wait to be done and just want to get that thing bound and move on to the next thing. So you'll have to try out both methods and see which one you like. I'm going to hand bind my quilt. So I'm starting on the front of my quilt. If you are going to machine bind, you'd wanna start this step on the back of your quilt. Take your binding with the raw edges and align that with the raw edge of the quilt. And I'm starting in the middle side of my quilt. You can start anywhere, but that's just where I like to start. And you wanna leave about a 10 inch tail, just enough that when you get all the way around, we have wiggle room to attach these two ends together. And we are not gonna pin anything. We're just gonna go straight to our machine. 
We're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, and I'll show you what to do when we get to the corners. Remember that I'm leaving this tail here, and I have my quarter inch foot back on. You could use your standard foot, just make sure you're using a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're just gonna start sewing. I'm gonna align the edge of my presser foot with the edge of my fabric here. Just keep checking periodically that you are still aligned with your binding and your fabric as you're going. And you can see this part of it goes really fast. So this is why people like doing both sides of their binding with their machine. If you want to be done, then that's a great option. Okay, as I'm getting to the corner here, I want to show you this. Okay, let me make sure I'm still there. Okay. Okay, I want to stop a quarter inch from the end here. So I'm gonna go a little bit slower and I'm kind of watching. I kind of know where that's, mm, maybe that's about a quarter inch. Did a little back stitch. I'm gonna cut my threads and take this off. Now I will show you, you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you just sew to the end? What's the big difference? Then I'm gonna pivot my quilt like this if, and you're going to fold this up. Now, if I had sewn all the way to the end, when I fold my binding up, it would make my binding off the edge of my quilt a little bit when I come back. So by stopping a quarter inch like that, it gives us a little bit extra room so that when we come back down the other side, it's aligned well. So you're going to fold this up. You wanna make a 45 degree angle with your binding like that. And just kind of hold it like that. And then you're gonna come back down again with your binding. There we go. And just like that. So I know that looks a little confusing. The first time you do it, it will all make sense. So here, let me show you again. I put this at a 45 degree angle so that it's cutting a corner, cutting a diagonal in my corner. Then I align it and fold it back down. So there's a little fold right there at the top and everything is all aligned on this side. And then we're gonna start up here with the quarter inch seam allowance again and go right back down the next side. I'm almost back to my starting point, so I don't wanna go all the way to the point. I want to leave, here is my tail where I started. I wanna leave a little bit of space and that's probably good. I'm gonna stop right there come off my machine and we're gonna go back to the cutting table so I can show you how we're going to attach these two ends. We have the two ends of our binding here and we want to sew these together the same way we did with our other strips with that bias seam. But how do we know where to cut these so that everything matches up perfectly? Well, I'm gonna show you a little trick. However wide we made our binding, and if you remember, we cut our strips two and a half inches wide. If you had cut yours two and a quarter, you would use that measurement. So we're gonna go with two and a half inches, and that is how much we are going to overlap these two ends. So I'm just gonna trim this off a little bit. And this space I left was about 15 inches. You just want some room so that we can, you know, sew these two ends together without it being awkward. Okay, I'm laying those right on top of each other. You can see like that, here's the end of my one strip. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure right there, that's the end of the one. Okay, two and a half inches and that's where I'm going to cut this one. And I know that feels scary, it's always scary to cut, but you know, if you messed up, you could always sew that piece back onto here and make it work. So, okay, now that we have those overlapping two and a half inches, we're gonna take them apart like this and I'm going to pull this all together to make it a little easier. Then we're going to do that same thing where we overlapped them like this about a quarter of an inch. Like I said, this can feel a little awkward if you don't have much space here, but just do your best. And then we're going to sew that diagonal bias seam right there. And then when it opens up, it's gonna be like that, we'll trim off the ends, and if we did everything right, it should fit just perfectly. So let's go back to our machine. 
just like we did before, we're gonna sew from this little notch down to this one. And I have these perpendicular with each other and over, overhanging just about, about a quarter of an inch. Okay. Back stitch there, and like I said, if you mess up, it's okay. You can take it out, you can add more fabric. There's always ways to make it work. Okay, then let's see how it looks. The seam looks great, and then I love this moment of pulling it next to my quilt. Before you trim anything off, you want to make sure, oh yay, it fits so perfectly, I love that. Okay, dun 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 dun. You guys, we are getting close. Let's trim this off right here, just like we did with our other seams. And then we're gonna sew the rest of this quilt binding in place. And then we'll have to just sew it on the other side. We'll sew it by hand. Okay, back stitch, and then sew down until we get to the beginning of where our binding started. There we go, just like that. Perfect little binding. Okay, let's sew it to the other side. When you're hand sewing, it takes a little while to figure out how you like to hold the quilt as you're sewing. In fact, sometimes I forget when I start a quilt again and I start holding it at the top and realize, no, I like to hold it at the bottom better. And I like to use a few of these wonder clips. They're really great for holding it in place as you are hand sewing around. I used to use a bunch of them and you know hold a bunch of it in place and then I realized that that was kind of annoying because it takes a little while to hand sew and everything was falling off so I pretty much just use three or four at a time. Then I have my needle and thread here. I have two strands of thread on there and I'm using a thread color that will blend in with my binding. So I'm using pink. I like to lick my fingers and do a little roll like that and tie a knot. If you want to see that again, I have a video here on my channel. Okay, and then we're ready to start. So I am going to, I like to start just somewhere inside the binding like that so that the end of my thread is going to be hidden. Okay, there we go. Now, let me remove this one. And we're going to take stitches, and like I said, you'll have to figure out how you like to hold it. I like to go in this direction all the way down. Some people might go the other direction. It kind of depends on if you're right-handed or left-handed. And I'm going to go into my quilt a little bit, and then I'm gonna come up through my binding right there and pull it down. Go in right here, come into your binding, and then come out right along that top crease right there and pull it. Back down again. You don't wanna come out, see that? You don't wanna come out there because then you're gonna see the stitch. I'm really trying to stay along this spine of my binding. At least that's the way I like to do it. You will find your groove and what works for you. And you can see that those stitches are kind of hidden in there. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going all the way around. And when I get to my corner, I will pause and show you what to do there. Okay, and I am getting close to the end of my thread here. So how do we finish that off? That's a great question. What I like to do, let me do a couple more stitches here. Okay, I like to open this up a little bit and tie a, a knot off somewhere in here. So I go into my fabric like that and I do a little knot. It kind of pulls this tight, but it will, it'll work itself out. And then I'll do it again. What I'm trying to do is get this knot to be hidden down inside so that it's enclosed. Whoa, I just broke off the end. So I guess we're doing two there. <laughs> and then that will stay right inside there, then I'm going to get a new needle and thread, and I'm gonna start back, come out, and then keep going. Okay, here's my new thread. 
I'm gonna kind of go back where I tied that knot. I'm going backwards, as you can see. And I'm gonna come out of my binding right there so that it, again, so that this is hidden. You want all those threads to stay inside there. And now I have a clean start again on this. So I can go back and continue my stitches. There we go. And remember as you're going that you're trying to enclose this stitch line here. So you want this to be going over it enough that it is enclosing that line. And that is why I like doing two and a half inch wide binding. Two and a quarter looks beautiful. I guess it's just a little more of a challenge for me. Maybe I should try it again. <laughs> We're at the corner and we wanna fold our binding so that it creates a mitered corner. So you can see that it naturally folds this direction creating a 45 degree angle for us. Then if we fold it back on itself, you can see that it creates a nice diagonal cut for us right there. And sometimes I have to do it a couple times till I get it just exactly where I want it. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then there's a few different ways that you could hold this in place. Some people will just not stitch right there in the corner and continue on to the next side. Or some people like to stitch a little X or some little tacking area right there. What I like to do is to go down inside of it. So let me see if I can show you this. Um, you can see that my stitching is at the end there. I will kind of go down and I like to come out somewhere at the end there like that. And then, just pull that tight, okay. And then I will take a stitch or two going back, just like I've been stitching along the rest of my quilt, going back in the other direction. And again, that doesn't really matter. You could not stitch it and it will still hold in place, but I just like mine to be a little more secure looking. So I'm gonna come out of the corner right there. And then after that, I'm gonna continue right down this other side. There we go. Then just continue down, do the same thing at the next corner. And the nice thing is you have four corners, so you get a lot of practice. I'm back to the beginning of my binding. I'm just doing my last stitches here. And we want to finish off this thread and conceal our knot inside of the binding. So let's see, did I do that? Okay, there we go. You can see this last little part. I'm gonna tie a small knot here into the seam of the quilt there. Let's do a double knot like that. I'll tie one more. Okay, and then I'll take my last stitch. There we go. And now I want to make my needle go through here. So I'm gonna come down so that we can hide the tail of this thread. My needle is just going through. I'm gonna come out somewhere down here. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so my knot is somewhere over here, but my needle is down here. So then I'm gonna pull this tight like that, cut this, and that little tail is just hiding in there somewhere. And look at our beautiful binding. The corners look great. It's so pretty. Ooh, I'm loving this quilt. We are all done with our quilt and I love it so much. It's so fun to see all these different fabrics together and then the backing fabric, it's like two quilts in one. Oh man, I hope you enjoyed making a quilt and all the different steps along the way. It is quite a process. But I think what I love is that with every stage, just when I'm kind of getting sick of that stage, you move on to the next one. It's kind of like raising kids. So I hope there are more quilts in your future. And for more ideas and other patterns and information about my fabric, you can head to my website, madeeveryday.com. And for all of your sewing machine needs and to check out the Baby Lock Brilliant or the Genuine series, you can click the link below or go to babylock.com. And happy quilting!